What are the pros and cons of a magnetic bearing chiller? Now, this is a very interesting topic. And as I think about it, it feels very similar to uh, a conversation around, say, like VRF, for example. There are there are pros and cons that really do have a heavy impact. Some of it is industry related to just the technicians or ourselves, right? A lot of us really struggle understanding magnetic bearing chillers and more specifically, I think the actual softwares we have to use in conjunction with them. And there's not only if we can get our hands on the software, but being able to effectively use that software Ultimately, though, pros and cons. So the major pros to magnetic bearings, it comes down to really improved efficiency. Um, and I think that's the main thing is we can significantly improve our efficiency and simplify the mechanical design of these compressors. Because most compressors we use in the industry are high speed. The way that we've had to achieve high speed in the past is through a geared system, right? Now, there are some modern motors that are um, DC-based that are getting a high, high speed straight through the shaft. So those are a little different in modern terms. But for the most part, we had to do a bull and pinion gear to increase our speed on the uh, drive shaft, on the output shaft for the impeller. It creates one, we have to have an oil system to keep those gears lubricated in addition to the bearing system. And then those, those gears become another friction point, another wear point. It further reduces the actual efficiency of a system. So by going to a mag bearing, <clears throat> now we can, we're not limited by our bearing speed. Like, so journal bearings, for an example, uh, or uh, uh, they can only we can only run those at such a high speed not only can we get the motor so high but we have to be careful with with how we use those right and by going direct to the shaft we are able to reduce all of that extra mechanical friction and wear in the process so that's one improvement for having a direct shaft system, which is arguably a very big improvement over a, a gear drive system for a high speed, right? Uh, now, the big difference you have from going low speed to high speed is just the size of the compressor. With a high speed, you can use a smaller impeller. That the whole package becomes much smaller in size uh, to move that refrigerant versus with a low speed, you, you need a much larger impeller and system in order to get the same um, the same energy added to the refrigerant to create the lift and such we need. Another pro would be just completely removing oil from the equation. So while centrifugals don't directly mix oil into the refrigerant stream process, like it doesn't go through the impeller like it would a, um, a scroll or a screw, like our discharge gas is not oil latent like some of those other compressors are. Uh, but it's not completely oil free either, especially if we have any kind of migration issues. And that's why we have eductors in the system to begin with is there is some oil that does get into the refrigerant stream, into the heat exchangers that we have to cycle around. That oil is just an insulator. We, we don't like it reduces our ability to transfer heat. So by removing that oil from the equation, our ability to transfer improves. Our approaches are able to maintain even lower values, which means we have even better efficiency in the end. Um, so that is, uh, I think those are the two major things. Now, in terms of cons, I'm not even going to say, so some of the manufacturers are touting, you know, improved life expectancy or things because of having no mechanical operation there for the bearings specifically because the bearings historically are a failure point for oiled systems. Mm -hmm. My issue with that is honestly mag, mag bearings so far have not lasted 
a fraction of the time we would expect an oil bearing to last. Now, there's a lot that has to play with that. We're still dealing with a fairly new technology. There's a lot going on around the development of mag bearing systems. Um, the, the systems are extremely sensitive to electrical instability in a building in a space for that grid. So if you have a lot of instability, which a lot of buildings do, especially in major metros, I guess you, you don't have the cleanest power in the world. And unless we install some kind of isolation system on the front end of, or coming into the chiller, uh, whether it be isolation transformers, or we install some kind of, um, uh, a bank, whether they call them a M MCP or something. Anyway, uh, unless we have that in place to where we're basically isolating the, the power the chiller is using from the grid's power. So all those instabilities and the static noise that tends to build up inside of a, a building with a lot of drive equipment. If we can't eliminate that, that just wrecks havoc on all of our electrical control systems, which makes our life as the technician very difficult, and it reduces the actual life that we're seeing from these compressors. We're just we're just not there yet, right? C will we probably be there one day where we've got all these things sorted out and like we have really good standards for moving forward? Absolutely. Um, we're just not there yet. So I think that's something to just – that's one of the major drawbacks. And then our ability to work on it as technicians. Uh, there are plenty of us who have gotten enough training, gotten enough experience. Like we can service and work on magnetic bearings at this point, but there's a lot of us that really struggle to, and that's to be expected. Okay. Uh, these are not simple systems. Uh, you can break them down fairly well into their simple forms, but in the grand scale of things, especially if you're new to trying to get into this technology, it's, it, it'll mess with your mind. Like it's, it's a very, very different animal. And so I think we should, we should be mindful of that when we're working with younger techs who don't understand it as well as, you know, so the rest of us, the rest of us has have, have had an opportunity to get a grasp of the whole machine and these younger guys Many times, you know, you may be, you're still trying to understand what the compressor does. Now you've got to understand this whole mag bearing thing on, on top of that, when you may not even fully understand how the oiled bearings work correctly either. You're, you're putting a pretty tough spot there, uh, especially if you haven't had proper training on the subject. So anyway, yeah, I would say those are the major cons. Um, we haven't had very good results with uh, bearing life. I just thought of another one I should add, but um, they're very, you know, just very sensitive to the electrical grids. Technicians being able to work on them, not only having the software, but then knowing what to do with that software. And you've got to be very specific and precise because it's like a turbo core, for example. If you don't do that bearing calibration <clears throat> just correct, I mean, just right, and you end up accidentally saving a bad calibration into that compressor i mean it, it can be fixed don't get me wrong but it, it, it's a pain like you really you dug yourself a hole there when you were actually better off with the with the first calibration you started with but if you don't know this the little tricks like unhooking the cable so there's no inputs and nothing else can disturb it and everything's just right if you don't know some of that stuff you get in trouble fast um a well, I had a I had another point I was gonna make, and now I am. Oh, a really really common thing, actually. Well, not using clean equipment and cylinders when tr doing uh, mag bearing transfers. These systems cannot have oil. Now, some of the say more modern. Uh, compress or I guess they're all modern. Some of the newest ones will have oil catches right in the uh, suction cone. That if there is any oil in the system, it has a way of getting caught as it's coming into the compressor and trying to drain down into a little 
uh, trap reservoir. That way it's, it, but these are only, these are small reservoirs if they even have one. And um, that's not, they're just trying to help solve for that comes back to the, just the technicians um, lack of practice and understanding. So people are, they're either retrofitting these into a system and they don't properly clean all the oil out, which is not an easy thing to do to begin with, or they end up uh, charging dirty refrigerant where maybe the cylinder got used on an oil machine in the past and there was still some oil uh, in, the, in the bottom of that or some oil residue, something like that. And this happens all the freaking time. They turn around and charge that drum. It may be the same refrigerant that came out of there the first time, but now it's laced with oil. And then that oil gets into the, the, the bearing coils and just fries them. I mean, it does not take long. I get pictures sent to me all the time where the whole suction cover of the compressor is just full of oil and you pull that um, uh, uh, front cover off and just oil starts to drain out the front of the compressor. I mean, that just <clears throat> you cannot, that can't happen. And so that's a practice that we haven't properly adopted when we start working on these mag mach machines, uh, we cannot have oil contaminated cylinders of any kind. And that is a major thing we have to take into account. And it is causing a lot of failures more than just some of the natural failures that are happening on their own. So anyway, there's your pros and cons to mag bearing. Um, I do, this technology is here to stay. People are only pushing it harder whether it's the right path or not, it's not really relevant at this point. It's the path we're on, similar to VRF chillers, right? So it's just this is where the industry is going. It's our responsibility to just keep up with what our customers need, and that means working on whatever equipment they have. And if that's what they have and we want to have their, their business, then we've got to learn how to do it. If you're not already in Chiller Academy, I'd really encourage you to go check it out. Just think about it, right? Uh, this is what I do full time. I, I've, I've committed, I've stepped out of the field, committed my career to this going forward. This is what I've always wanted to do and to be able to educate, help others and grow and help this industry take step, steps forward. Um, so chilleracademy.com, like I'd, I'd love to be able to work with you over there. We've got a community page. Uh, every, all the lessons have a comment section. That's what I spend a lot of my day doing. If I'm not working on the lesson material itself, then I am in the comments and I'm trying to respond to those as fast as I can, uh, in addition to helping you through email and otherwise. So love to be able to work with you. For all of those that are in the academy, y'all are doing some great work out there. Keep it up. I really appreciate the support and the feedback that you've given.